So, we talked about how the total strain in a body due to deformation can be decomposed into deviatoric and volumetric components. Now let's study the deformation of a solid body and see how this decomposition is done mathematically. Let's consider a small block of solid whose dimensions are LX, LY and LZ in the three principal directions. Now let's subject it to a very small deformation. Since it's oriented in the principal directions, there are no shear deformations. As a result, the solid changes its dimensions by DLX, DLY and DLZ in three principal directions. The resultant change in volume can be calculated using this equation. In this equation, V is nothing but the volume of the block before undergoing any deformation and it's a product of the three initial principal dimensions LX, LY, LZ. Let's plug this relation in the earlier equation and divide it by V on both sides and it reduces to this form. Notice that in this new form, these three terms are nothing but the normal strains in the three principal directions. And the term on the left hand side is the ratio of change in infinitesimal volume to the original volume, which is nothing but the volumetric strain. So, from this equation, the volumetric strain is nothing but the summation of all the three principal strains. And finally, another point that is worth noting is that the shear strains do not change the volume of the body. Only the normal strains result in a change in the volume of the body. So we talked about the deviatoric and volumetric strains. Now let's talk about the stresses. Usually there are two stress components corresponding to each of these strains. They are the deviatoric stresses and hydrostatic pressure. The stresses developed in the body due to deviatoric strains are called as deviatoric stresses and the ability of the material to resist deviatoric strain is nothing but elastic modulus. Similarly, the stresses developed in the body due to any change in volume is called as volumetric stress or the hydrostatic pressure and the ability of the material to resist volumetric strain is nothing but bulk modulus. Mathematically, it's nothing but the average of the three principal deviatoric stresses. To understand the physical meaning of these quantities, let's consider a simple scenario. Let's take this cube and apply two types of loads and boundary conditions. In the first case, we constrain the block in only one direction and keep it free to deform in all the other directions. In this state, much of the deformation is deviatoric, so majority of the stress is deviatoric. In the second case, we constrain the block in all the directions and apply the same force in one direction. In this case, the material is not allowed to deform in any other direction, so the material can deform only when there is a change in volume. So, all the stresses developed in the body is volumetric in nature. This is the physical interpretation of deviatoric and volumetric stresses.